Well, okay, we'll go ahead and get started with assistant head coach for defense and uh, our run game coordinator, uh, Coach David Turner, and we'll open it right up for questions for, for Coach Turner. So. Just kind of curious, you, you had the spring now with your group, and now you have them in camp. Kind of how is the progression going? Have you seen them kind of take what they learned in the spring and apply it now? Yeah, I'll, um, I would say probably the last probably three days, I see the guys starting to make a bigger jump. Um, they're understanding the techniques, understanding what we're asking them to do. Um, now they're kind of focused in and honing in on particular skills, uh, situations, those type things. So I'm, I'm pleased with where they are right now. I'm pleased with the group. Rod? Coach, you have, uh, you have two new freshmen and a transfer in that group. Yeah. What are you seeing from that? Well, um, surprisingly, um, Horace Lockett has had, had a couple of good days. Uh, KJ Miles is, is coming around. I, I'm pleased with the group. Uh, those two guys, well, the group, those two guys that we bought in at tackle. Um, Daniel Carson is starting to, I think, settle in, starting to understand the terminology, starting to understand uh, my teaching, what we're trying to get done. Uh, I saw him take a jump today. Hopefully we can keep building on that. But I, those three guys, the two freshmen and Daniel, I'm, I'm pleased with where they are. Um, it's always a process, you know, trying to get better each and every day, trying to pick out one thing. I tell the guys, pick out one thing each day that you want to say when you walk off the field you got better at. Um, and I'm starting to see those guys starting to, to hopefully they continue to trend up with it and, and keep getting better each day. Okay. Of those three, uh, and just the way you're looking at the rotation and playing time and so forth, could you end up, could you envision one of them playing a, a second man role for you? Well, obviously, we hope Daniel will be able to provide either some depth or be a starter. Um, you know, it's a little early for the freshman. Uh, I'm, I'm about uh, four or five deep right now. With, with I got ten guys for um, two positions. We got a couple of walk-ons that are, that, are, that are starting to come around, so I'm pleased with the group overall. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I would like to have roles for everybody. Hopefully, everybody can have a chance to to play, uh, everybody will have a role. Fact is, probably everybody won't, won't. But um, you know, those 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 two guys, Daniel and the freshman. I, I don't know, Daniel. Yes, you know, we got to we got to get him going. Obviously, being an older guy, he has played college football. Um, those freshmen, I tell them all the time. You know, they decide if they're going to play. You know, if they pick it up, they know what to do. First thing is knowing what to do. Second part is knowing how to do it. So um, it's still a little bit early for that. Daquan's a guy who seemed to kind of flash in the spring and, and pick it up. Kind of what has he done well, and, and how are you seeing that progression take into camp? <laughs> he, he is by far the most consistent guy. I mean, every day he shows up. He doesn't say anything. You can, you can yell at him. You can get on him. It just rolls off his back. He keeps rolling. So I'm, I'm pleased with where he is. Makai's is taking a step um, this fall. I see him at a different speed, at a different level. Um, trying to get better. Those two guys have been uh, the most consistent guys is trying to get everybody else, else up to their level right now. You know, by no means have we arrived, but, but Quan is just, I mean, he, he's amazed. He's kind of like the Energizer Bunny. So every day is the same. That's the best thing you can say about him. Every single day is the same. Back in the spring, Keon talked about moving inside and moving outside. Is he going to settle in in either one of those, or are you still planning on uh, doing, you know, rotating him like that? I, I would imagine um, he's a guy that we can use in several positions. Um, we're still trying to figure that out. We're still trying to, to get our packages together. But but he's a guy that his skill set and his size could, could play outside. And I've, I've had a history of those guys being able to do both, play outside, play inside. Um, and, and he's a guy that has shown the ability now. We just got to try to figure out the packages and get him in the right spot. Okay. Um, Zeke is someone you didn't have in the spring and kind of like, where, how, how's he coming along and how do you see him fitting in? He's, he's coming along. Um, the last two days have been by far his best days. Uh, I think part of it is he's, he's starting to get some confidence in his shoulder now. Um, and, and as he gains confidence in that, it will allow him to play faster, it'll allow him to play um, harder up and more violent up front. But he's, he's starting to come around. I'm pleased with where he's at. He, he's just got to understand, you know, it's going to be some hard coaching, and he's just got to listen sometimes to what I'm saying and not how I'm saying it and, and keep rolling. But he, he's starting to come along. 
when you look kind of at your group, is there a particular area that you feel is a strength and a concern, like run defense or pass rush or somewhere in particular you feel like there's a point of emphasis for you in camp trying to get them better at? Well, obviously the point of emphasis is we got to be able to stop the run. That's, that's first and foremost. I think we gave up, I believe it was 182 yards a game, something like that last year. So we, we got to cut that down. We got to be able to stop the run first and second down, and then we get the third down. You know, third down is a moot point if you don't stop the run on first and second down. So we got we to gotta be better on first and second down um, and, and being more consistent of gapping it up and stopping the run and get people to third down. If we do that, we get the third down, we, we'll have enough where we can get after some people. Right. Do you, do you like to rotate guys in and out to keep them fresh for that, you know, fourth quarter? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What these guys have to do, big guys, um, it's no question. You know, the ultimate deal is is a guy maybe played 30, 35 snaps. So you got you to gotta have at least two deep. Hopefully you got three. But, uh, you, yeah, those guys can't play 60, 70 snaps a game. It's just physically impossible to play at the level we need them to play at and the speed we need, need them to play at. And over the course of 12 games, they'll just get worn down. So um, we got to be able to rotate guys, and we got to be able to uh, develop some depth. We'll do two more. We'll do Ken and then Kelly. Wrap this up. So follow up on what you were saying about uh, stopping the run. Um, first, I guess, I ask, like, what, what do you see when you looked at last year's tape, kind of what needed to be fixed, whether it was technique or manpower or whatever? And then second, like, and your, 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 part of your title is, is run game coordinator, run defense coordinator. Like, is, can you explain how, like, how that part of your job, what, what, what that entails for you? Well, it's just a matter of everybody doing their job, consistent fits, guys being where they're supposed to be. Don't try to make up stuff. Don't try to get out of your gap. Don't try to, to be a hero. It's just a matter of every snap, guys doing their job. Be where you're supposed to be. Um, in the defense, fit where you're supposed to fit in the defense. So those are the things um, that we're, we're really harping on. Um, everybody has a responsibility to do your job. And then it's a matter of uh, you got to get off a block and make a play. So uh, those are the things that we've been focusing on this fall. Kelly? Uh, two guys I'm kind of curious about. Both have kind of battled some injuries here. TK and then also Kilo. Just kind of where are they at in terms of their development and Kind of trying to get into that rotation. Um, TK is is practicing better than he did in the spring. Uh, it's noticeable. Um, hopefully, he understands that you know this is kind of his last go round. So what he does now is really it. So I think he has uh, a little bit more sense of urgency um, to get out here every day and, and play harder, play faster, do all the things we're asking him to do. Um, Kilo. You know, he, he's, he's, he's still a young guy. You know, he's, he's battled a lot of things. He's gone through more things than, than anybody should have to go through um, in terms of his family situation. Um, every day he's, he's fighting um, and, and trying to get better. And, and my whole deal, guys, if, if guys are working and trying to do what I ask them to do, I can fix all the other stuff. You know, I, I tell them every day, worry about the things you got control over. That's attitude and effort. Just come out and work keep a good attitude and I can fix um, the other stuff. I guess I'm arrogant enough to think I can, but I, I think I can fix the other stuff. So um, Kilo is, is coming around. He's still um, got a little maturing to do, but but I'm happy with where, he's, where he is um, and he's got to get better. I think football is important to him. I know he wants to be really good and as long as he has that drive and that motivation, then he'll be all right. Awesome. Thank you, Coach Turner. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with our defensive line coach, Coach Larry Knight, and uh, we'll open it right up for questions for Coach Knight. So, Kelly? Uh, obviously, pass rush and, and your defensive end room is, you know, focus with this group. Kind of what are you seeing from the first week and a half of camp or week or whatever it is now, um, just from your group? Uh, that they are embracing the competition. Um, it is some, uh, some serious competition in the room, um, as you all know. There's quite a few guys that have played uh, significant and meaningful snaps, and they look around the room and they know it. So now it's about, all right, how can I increase my playing time? How can I increase my value to the team? And so what's happening is those guys are competing on a daily basis. They're not taking days off because they know they take a day off. Somebody could end up taking some of those snaps away from them. So uh, it's been really good competition in the room. The guys have embraced it. I've been happy with that so far. Rod. 
on the strong side, naturally everyone talks about Keon, but you've got a couple other guys, you know, pushing him a little. Sylvain has maybe come back from injuries. Josh jumping into his second year. What are you seeing from those two? Uh, focus. Uh, Josh is just very dependable. Uh, always doing the right thing, always where he's supposed to be. He's just one of those guys you never have to worry about him. And then it's been great to have uh, a healthy Sylvain back. Uh, Sylvain is an energy guy, you know, um, always has a lot of energy. He can run, you know what I mean? Um, ask really good questions in the meeting, and you can just tell he's, he's just happy to be here, happy to be healthy, and, and happy to have an opportunity to compete. So um, it's very good to have those guys competing and pushing Keon as well. You know, uh, he's been very good for the room. And I think that the chemistry there is really good at that position with uh, those guys pushing each other, but also coaching each other as well. So that's been really good. As a mental part of Savannah's game, they made a jump. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, the first year, he we drawing certain things up on the board, and we put the Y up there for the tight end. He's like, Coach, what's the Y? He, he didn't know what was what. You know, and now he's actually asking advanced questions now. You know, he. He likes to learn. Uh, we were talking yesterday. He likes to learn more now. All right, so how does this fit working behind me? I have this area. How's the guy filling in behind me? Or if we drop him in the coverage, he wants to know the structure of the entire defense, which has been pretty cool to watch how he's grown um, as he's uh, as he's been here. You know. With Keon, um, can you kind of describe maybe the difference in him last year, this year, being healthier, and, and what you what you can expect out of him? Uh, if I'm being honest, like, it's not really a difference. And what I mean by that is he's conducted himself like a, like a pro since he's been here. So even when, he was, even when he was injured, he was showing up at everything, working hard at everything, pushing others, uh, being a positive influence on the team. And now having him back healthy, he's able to do that, but in between the lines. So uh, that has been really good because he's always been one that conducts himself uh, like like a professional it, it, since, since he stepped foot on this campus. And it, it's great to have him back out there because now you see the things that he's been trying to coach those other guys to do or pushing them to do. He's doing them himself, you know, now that he has his, uh, now that he has his health back. So that's, that's been a uh, really positive influence, not just on the room, but it's been a positive influence on the defense and on the whole team. Can you talk a little bit about the rush spot? I mean, you have sort of had three guys kind of competing in spring, and you had Christian now too. Mm -hmm. Just what are you seeing from from that group, and and what will be the differentiator? I guess that gets someone the, the nod early in the season. Um, it's it's to me that's probably the more competitive, uh, probably one of the most competitive spots on the defense. Those guys are fighting, and as you can see, the rotation has been just it's been different every day, and it's. It, I, I walk in the room and I say, hey, what have you done for me lately? That's that's where we stand. Like, so that's why you can't have any bad days and they know it. You know, you have a bad day, you know, somebody else has a good day. That's going to be the guy because all three of them have played uh, significant snaps. All three of them have made plays in, in, in games and all three of them are athletic kids. So what I'm what I'm hoping for is that they continue to, to push each other the way that they push. And I, I think we can find work for all all three of those guys. They they so far they've earned it. They really have uh, with with their approach, with their mindset, uh, and the competitiveness. That's it's, it's been on a level that I've been wanting to see. Uh, but right now it's it's just they they all neck and neck, and they, and they all continue to push each other, which I've been proud of. Is Noah a guy that's really starting to learn how to use his size to his advantage? Absolutely. Absolutely, um, especially now that <clears throat> you know in the spring he wasn't he wasn't quite a hundred percent, and now he's gotten to that point and uh, he's starting to grow and mature, and and you can kind of see you know how it is guys are, are, are freshmen they trying to figure it out you know they just trying to get in where they fit in and trying to be on time and you know this that and the other trying to remember what's the team rules where do I go here how do I do this how do I do that he's past that point now where he's trying to uh, um, advance his football game. All right, so in the past I was doing this. Coach, how do I fix it? You know what I mean? Where do I put my eyes in this situation? Where do I put my hands in that situation? And, and we're seeing some growth out of him because his future is really, really bright. Um, if, he, if he stays focused on it, he can disguise the limit for that guy. It really is. Do you see him while you have just the guys, guys that can win one-on-ones and, and get to the quarterback and, and create, create trouble? Yeah, we, we just got a lot of work to do to get to it. Uh, we, we have guys that have the natural ability, absolutely. 
You know, um, I just have to continue to, uh, to to coach them up on the technique, and they have to continue to, uh, to, to work the way that they've been working, and, and we'll get to that point. You know, um, but they're, they're doing the right things. They're doing the right things to get there, and uh, we just got to have the right guys in and, and, and the proper situations and, and to create the success that we would want of getting to the uh, passer. Time for a couple more for Coach. Since you guys have been here, you haven't had a guy that can command a double team consistently. It seems like Keon might be that guy. Can you just talk about how that impacts the whole defensive line when you have a guy that a team has to scheme for, you know, at that at one of your end positions? Um, I can't crown him yet. You know, I, I would hope that's where we get. Um, I, I would hope that he can, could command uh, attention. But I also would hope that the guys who's playing on the other side could too, you know. and. Now, now you, got, you have real problems when you got two of those guys, two of those type of guys. So I'm hoping that it's not just him. I'm hoping that we could have um, someone at each of those, those defensive end positions that could command that type of attention because it opens it up for everybody, you know, not just, not just the, the, the defensive line, but it helps the defense as a whole, you know, on some of the, uh, some of the pressures. It helps the coverage, you know what I mean? So uh, we're trying to get to the point where, uh, we're developing playmakers on, on both of those sides and, and not just uh, the side that Keon's playing on. Anything else for Coach Wright? Glad to finish this up. You, you've uh, had a while now coaching on the outside, you know, after making the change. How has it been for you? Uh, it's been fun. Y'all know that's my natural position. That's what I played. So um, it, it's, I've, I've had a blast, you know, having the opportunity to, uh, to slide back out and, um, you know, work with those guys. Uh, I think that they've been excited. I think that uh, our chemistry is 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 uh, uh, working really well together, and uh, I'm I'm just excited to see what they do, man. It's, you know how it is. It's like you, y'all y'all have those little babies, and and they start to get they start growing, they start walking, and then all of a sudden they start talking, and then they repeat the words. You drop something and, and say the wrong word, and then next thing you know they repeating that same word. You know, so it's it's kind of like you you get a chance. Spring, I, I started working with those guys at first. And then they were terrible with the technique that I was teaching. You know what I mean? It's something I say to their face. You know, hey, it was terrible. And as spring went on, I saw them start to get better. So I'm like, all right, cool. All right, they went from laying on their back to crawling. All right, now they went from crawling to walking. Now we're to the point where we jogging a little bit and we talking, we saying, putting little sentences together. And so we're getting out of that infant stage. And I feel like we're, we're, we're growing up. And, and that's, the, that's the part that's, that's probably been the most exciting and rewarding as a coach. And so now the next step, the next step of it is, what does our consistency levels look like? You know, are we being consistent uh, with our actions? Are we being consistent with our technique? All right. And then it has to translate onto the game day. It doesn't matter if you're not able to translate, you know, the drill to the field or, or the field to game day. We got to make sure that what we're doing now and how we're improving now is what shows up on September 5th. And that's, that's the challenge. And, and I'm confident that these guys can do it. I, I really love the group. I really do. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that the development and, and the focus that these guys have right now uh, continues to translate as we move forward through the season. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Huh? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. To uh, Micaiah Scott, uh, we'll uh, go ahead and open it right up for questions. Rod? Uh, can you tell us you know, what it means for you to wear that number eight? Um, it's an honor, man. Really, uh, just seeing how much uh, that number means to the community, uh, the GT community, uh, the GT family. It's just an honor, and I'm blessed to wear it. Looking at your your group, um, it seems like you and Daquan kind of made the biggest jump from from the spring to now. What do you kind of attribute to the the, the progress you guys have made inside? Uh, I feel like uh, technique, man. Uh, really, just emphasizing hands, feet, and eyes. Really, just going. Just trying to take it to the next level. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, for you, how, how do you feel like you've gotten better? To, you know, I'm sure you want to play more than you did last year. What what have you gotten better at? Um, yes, sir. My technique and my hand, my hand placements, and run and the run game. And yes, sir. My strength as well. Rob, what's it like playing for Coach Turner? He's been around for a while. Has a lot of experience. Yeah. You know, that's uh, I imagine that's. He's, he's somebody that you guys really look up to. Yeah, so we look up to him because he's uh, bringing so much knowledge to the game. He's been around for like 30 plus years. He done seen it all. So just having that that ear in our in our group, it means a lot to us. I was talking to Jordan Williams um, a 
couple days ago, and he was mm. talking about the bond the two of you have. Can you kind of just talk about that kind of brotherhood between you guys and how fun it's been to, to see each other here? Man, yeah, uh, I've been knowing Jordan since, like, elementary school. We just came up together from Gainesville, uh, all through our elementary, middle school, high school, and our college. So we just got a great bond. We just been locked in with each other for, from, like, a uh, little age. So the, grind just, the, uh, the bond just been bigger and bigger every year. Anything else from Makaios? Ken? Did you, now, curiously, regarding you wearing the number eight, did you get a chance to talk you know, directly or personally with, with either Peyton Manning or or, Demer, uh, or um, Morgan Burnett about, about you know, just about Demarius Thomas and kind of the, the honor that you have? Um, yes, sir. They, they, they told me to uh, honor it well. Uh, no pressure, just honor it well, honor his name well, honor the number, and just have a chip on my shoulder every time I go out there and play. No. So what are your thoughts on D Lyman wearing the single digits and stuff? Is that something you were like hoping to do here? Yes, sir. It... Yes, sir. I love it. Uh, I like uh, D Lyman uh, single digit numbers. Yes, sir. Hey, three hills. Okay. Here's, um, Keon, uh, his athletic ability, just yeah. running, jumping, that sort of thing, is, is, speaks for itself. Kind of, is there anything particularly that you've seen him do that you're like, wow, that's someone that big should be doing that? Probably in the weight room. He, he a freak, man. He a freak in the weight room. Athleticism, uh, strength, he's smart on the field. He got everything you need. Thank you, guys. All right. Kyle, thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. We've got Kyle Kennard. We'll open it right up for questions for Kyle. Go. How do you see the competition right now at your, that rush end spot with you and, and Kevin and Noah? It seems like it's, it's pretty intense from what Coach Knight was telling us. Uh, yeah, it, it is very intense. Uh, it's a day in, day out thing. Um, I don't know if he told y'all, but it's kind of a what have you done for me lately kind of situation. So if you had a bad day, then you, I'm sure you won't be the one the next day. So it's just a matter of consistency. You, you played as a true freshman, then a little more the next year. Do you feel comfortable out there now and, and you feel you can you know put everything you've learned to good use? Uh, for sure. I feel way more mature in, in how I play. And most important, most importantly, or, or most of all, how I prepare, like um, getting treatment and uh, how early I'm in the building and things like that. Like I feel uh, I took a big step in my maturity as far as the game. Um, regarding what you're saying, like in terms of just what you're doing on the field, where do you feel like you've made the biggest growth? Uh, I feel like the biggest stride I've made in the as far as my previous seasons to now is probably my strength. Uh, like holding blocks and stuff like that. I, I feel like I've always been like a, a decent pass rusher, but it's been the problem with me um, being physical and being violent and, ho and like holding stuff down. How's the kind of install been with the, you had OTAs and all that stuff and then you guys kind of seemed like you started fast. Do you feel like you guys are further ahead than you were maybe a year ago at this point in camp in terms of install and, and kind of know what the plan is? Um, I feel like we are installing plays daily, which could seem fast to some, but a lot of it are plays we've seen before or have had, like, dabbled into the OTAs, like you said. So it shouldn't be, it's not that hard for us to grab, and it shouldn't be for the newer people. There's been some changes defensively with maybe Coach Collins taking a more hands-on approach. Uh, Coach Thacker doesn't have to coach linebackers anymore, so he can get around to, to watch you guys, you know. Have you guys noticed that difference? Uh, we noticed the difference tremendously. Like it's always good having more uh, expertise and, and, and knowledge on the um, defensive side of the ball, no matter who it is. So, yeah. Uh, Coach and I was talking about it. You like you feel like you guys are learning the techniques he was trying to teach you. Um, how how different is what he's trying to get you to do? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Sure. How different is what you're doing now, technically speaking, from what you'd be doing with Coach Coleman? Uh, it's, it's a lot of the same things, and if anything is different, like a, a step or a hand placement or something, it's very similar to the old teaching. It's not very many ways you could teach it differently, but I'd say Coach Knight teaches things like more of a modern game, today's game way. In terms of just motivation, you guys didn't put up the sack numbers you would like a year ago. How much drive is there to, to have that production this as year? As far as motivation, what was the first part of the question? You know, getting sacks and having motivation to, to kind of prove that you guys are better than maybe people you think you are in terms of as pass rushers? Is that something that motivates you guys? Oh, for sure. We have that chip on our shoulder every day. Like every day we come into meeting rooms, we talk about 
leading the defense and uh, or leading the uh, conference and, and pass rush, leading the conference and, and run defense and everything. Like we preach those goals every daily, so we're working towards it. Anything else for Kyle? Outstanding. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate Thank you.